here are 101 facts about Skyrim that only veteran players know. If you know at least 50 of these, then you've earned yourself a veteran's discount the next time you visit the Bannered Mare. Let's get into it. The Daedric symbols you come across throughout the game are actually a complete alphabet that can be translated into English. If Lucia isn't adopted, then she can be found sleeping behind the Bannered Mare. When Athos is asked why he joined the Companions, he responds with, Fortune and glory, friend. Fortune and glory. This is a line from Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. Indiana Jones is Todd Howard's favorite movie franchise. There's a ferryman in Dawnstar who can take you to the docks of Solitude and Windhelm for a small fee. You can take back stolen items that guards confiscate from you. Simply go to the city's jail and you'll find an evidence locker where all your stolen goods were stored. You can attend lectures at the College of Winterhold. They're typically held between 1 and 3 in the afternoon. Skyrim was the first game to use the Creation Engine. Only one other mainline game would use this engine until it was replaced with the Creation Engine 2, which will now run new Bethesda titles starting with Starfield. Grelod the Kind might be the weakest enemy in the entire game, with only a mere two hit points. Talk about a frail old lady. Before the game's launch, Bethesda announced that if someone gave birth to a child on Skyrim's launch day and named it Doverkin, then they would be rewarded with free Bethesda games for life. And in true Bethesda fan fashion, Doverkin Tom Kelameo was born on the 11th of the 11th, 2011, and the family has been enjoying free games ever since. After fitting the Dawnstar Sanctuary with a torture chamber, you can beat out information from your victims, who will give the locations of hidden treasure in return. Throughout the Dark Brotherhood questline, you can find a map in the Falkreath Sanctuary. A new knife will appear on this map each time you kill someone, with it being planted depending on where you killed them. Eric the Slayer, a Nord living in Rorikstead, has a very bittersweet origin story. The character was named after Eric West, a longtime fan of Bethesda games. Eric was diagnosed with cancer, and through the Make-A-Wish Foundation, Eric was able to visit the Bethesda offices. The employees were so impressed with Eric's knowledge of oblivion that they even provided him with a special tour. Eric passed away just six months before Skyrim's release. In honor of him, Bethesda created Eric the Slayer, the name being a combination of his real-life name Eric and his online alias Imok the Slayer. At the top of the Lost Valley Redoubt, you can find Hagravens turning regular Forsworn into Briarhearts. The piles of rock you come across, with cloth flapping between them, are called cans. Much like the game, these cans are used in real life to mark points of interest, as well as indicate that someone has trekked these lands before. You can put your bow and arrow skills to the test in an archery competition in Agni's camp south of Falkreath. The spectral assassin that you can summon has many pieces of hidden dialogue. These include him acknowledging Shadowmere, as well as commenting on your actions throughout the Dark Brotherhood questline. Speaking of the Spectral Assassin, he's Lucian Lachance, the leader of the Dark Brotherhood back in Oblivion. During a keynote in 2012, Todd Howard showed what Bethesda employees were able to add to Skyrim within a week. Many of these creations, such as kill cams for bows and magic, as well as adoption, were later added officially in future updates. However, many awesome creations were cut out of the game. These included seasonal weather changes, more complex and diverse dungeons, and most heartbreaking of all, a goddamn skeleton butler. Speaking of cut content, there is a key that you can pickpocket from Nazim which is for a place called Wintersand Manor. But alas, there is no such place in the game. The same key can also be found in a temple of Kinnereth Acolyte, which really begs the question of what the hell was going on in that manor. The Thieves' Guild is a little more tight-knit than meets the eye. Not only is Delvin Mallory the uncle of Sapphire, but his brother, Sapphire's father, can be found living as a blacksmith in Raven Rock. The strange symbols etched into some buildings were made by the Thieves' Guild. There are nine unique symbols in total, and they all tell something about the building it was marked on. For example, one symbol denotes that a building is dangerous for the Guild, while another call indicates that there is loot for the taking. Seven of the eight divines are named after beta testers of Elder Scrolls games. For example, Debella is named after Mary Jo Debella, and Akatosh is a dragon god who is named after a beta tester's online alias, which is the old Smog himself. Kinnereth is the only divine which has an original name. The two moons of Skyrim are not moons at all, but rather the shattered remains of Lorcan, the god who takes most of the credit for building Nern. So, the next time you're looking up at the night sky, just know that you're staring at the scattered corpse of a dead god.
40 different kinds of Khajiit exist within the law, however we've only seen three. The cycle of the moons determines what kind of Khajiit is born, many of which walk on four legs, like cats and tigers. It's basically confirmed that Shia Gorath in Skyrim is your player character from Oblivion. At the end of the Shivering Isles, Shia Gorath returns to his true form, Jigalak, and hands you the mantle of Prince of Madness. Shia Gorath even says that he was there for the whole affair when talking about the Oblivion Crisis. Shia Gorath can also tell the player that he's busy doing the fish stick. This may sound obscure to most players, but it's actually a reference to the official Elder Scrolls forums, where it was an inside joke for new users to be greeted with an image of a pirate holding a fish stick. Although they've never been shown in a mainline Elder Scrolls game, there's actually an 11th race. Known as the Slowed, these slimy frog-like creatures are known for their affinity for necromancy. Although they nearly made it into the Elder Scrolls 3, they were eventually cut and were never heard from again. Skyrim was used as a teaching tool at Rice University for a course around Scandinavian fantasy worlds, who said video games were a waste of time. Japanese video game magazine Famitsu is known for their brutal scoring style. Instead of making one critic review the game out of 10, Famitsu makes four different critics review the game and give a final score out of 40. Skyrim is one of only three Western games to receive a perfect 40 out of 40 score. With 60 million sales and counting, Skyrim is currently the seventh highest selling video game of all time, sitting comfortably between Red Dead Redemption 2 and Mario Kart 8. Skyrim is technically not the homeland of the Nords. Before they ever set foot on Tamriel, the Nords lived on the frozen continent of Amora. In the meantime, Skyrim was ruled by the Snow Elves and the Dwemer. Despite this, many Nords believe that their race was forged in the throat of the world and then displaced to Amora. To them, returning to Skyrim is merely returning home. No matter if this was true, the Nords eventually took control of Skyrim after Ysgrimor bought 500 companions from Amora and killed any Snow Elves they came across. The Snow Elves that survived retreated underground to the Dwemer. The Dwemer agreed to protect them and in return, the Snow Elves were blinded and were made into the Fulmer. Aside from the Snow Elves and the Nords, there's another group that claims Skyrim as their home, the Reachmen. This ancient group is native to southwestern Skyrim, and the group believes that they are the true owners of the Reach. These Reachmen were previously ruled by the vampiric Night Hollow Clan. Known to the Reachmen as the Night Folk, the Night Hollow Clan was among the first vampire clans in Tamriel. Vampirism itself was a curse placed on people by Molag Bal. It's said that he despised Arke's cycle of life and death, and turned people into immortal vampires as a great big middle finger to Arke and his cycles. Drinking a potion of water walking while underwater will teleport you straight to the surface. Across the river from Riverwood, you can find a hollow trunk that contains a treasure. It's really easy to find and has some great loot for the early game. If an NPC that resides in a city dies, then they'll have a coffin or urn made for them in the Hall of the Dead. You can find an ambushed Khajiit caravan east of Helgen. However, most players will never see this, as it gets removed after the player visits Riverwood for the first time. Each questline has unique banner art which you can see in the journal. West of the Elder Gleam Sanctuary, you can find some hunters skinny dipping in a hot spring. It may be hard to tell which books increase your skills at first, however, all books that raise skill levels will have a value of at least 50. You can kill bugs by swinging your weapons at them. Speaking of bugs, you can see ant trails on some parts of the road. There's a Skyrim-themed Monopoly board, just in case you didn't have enough versions of Skyrim. If you go to Sovngarde and take a look at the sky, you'll notice the three clouds representing the three skill categories, the warrior, the mage, and the thief. Including the Ratway, Riften is the most populated city in Skyrim, with 83 inhabitants. Conversely, Morthal has the lowest population, with only 18 inhabitants. You can use the power of the Ritual Stone to reanimate giants, so if you're stuck on what build you should play next, then why not lead an army of undead goddamn giants? Many of the tables that you can find throughout the game are actually just bookshelves clipped into the ground. Now, I know the video games have to cut corners, but this is just lazy. The 7,000 steps is actually just 719 steps. If you murder Feindel, then you'll receive a special letter from Sven, thanking you for your deed. There's a special kill cam where the Dragonborn body slams an enemy like it's WWE, and it looks as hilarious as it sounds. Much like the moon, the sun in Skyrim is not the sun you and I are familiar with. 
Instead, the sun in the Elder Scrolls universe is actually a giant hole that leads to Aetherius, the home of the Aedra. The word walls you find at the end of dungeons can be translated to English and typically have short stories written on them. No matter what the game says, you have a 100% chance to pickpocket someone if they are paralyzed. During the main questline, you can sometimes come across Alduin resurrecting dragons at shrines. You can actually go to Elsewhere in Skyrim. Typing the console command COC Elsewhere will take you to a special holding cell where you can find Maik the Liar whenever he's out of the map. There's a blind bandit in White River Watch called Ulfa, who's reading a book. Taking a look at what he's reading reveals that all the book's pages were empty. Dragon's Reach has a balcony that gives a pretty sweet view of Whiterun. The top of the Ratway Cistern, where the Thieves' Guild lives, is right below the well in the center of Riften's marketplace. Those of you who bought the game on disc can find crosses marked on the physical map that came in the box. These crosses lead to points of interest inside the game. If you read all 10 tablets on the way up to the 7,000 steps, you'll get a unique effect where animals will neither attack nor flee from you. Attacking Cicero with Shadow Mare nearby will make him side with the Jester instead of you. And here I thought I made a friend in Shadow Mare. Skyrim isn't the first Elder Scrolls games to have dragons. In the Elder Scrolls Adventures Redguard, you can find a dragon called Nefala, who's a loyal servant of Tiber Septim and protects a special soul gem. There's a special forge found in Silent Moon's camp called the Lunar Forge. It gets its name from the fact that it can only be used while it's under moonlight. Titus Mead was reading Brothers of Darkness Before You Killed Him. The book is about the Dark Brotherhood and their dealings. Oh, the irony. You can do the whirlwind sprint puzzle in Ustengraf by sprinting as a werewolf. Giants cannot crouch, so you can easily kill them by going underneath a bridge. You can have your very own Elder Gleam to grow at home. The Desert Rose is a real-life counterpart to the tree, which can be kept as a household plant. Although they all look the same, some guards actually wear scaled armor, while others wear leather. Southwest of the Shrine of Periite is an alcove below a cliff. There you can find two corpses with poisons and a dagger between them. This is a reference to Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Additionally, the quest Ill Met by Moonlight is a quote taken directly from A Midsummer Night's Dream. Skyrim is the only game to have a Steam Workshop page. In celebration of this, Valve and Bethesda made a special mod where the Space Corps from Portal 2 crash lands into Skyrim. You're then given the choice to keep him as a trinket in your inventory or turn him into a helmet. Prior to the Creation Club, Valve used Skyrim as their first attempt to monetize mods via the Steam Workshop. They did so by allowing mod creators to place paywalls behind their creations, with Steam cutting a cut of the sales. This idea received so much backlash that Steam removed the feature just a week after it launched. Both Oblivion and Morrowind are being built completely from the ground up using Skyrim's engine. These projects are being made solely by dedicated modders, voice actors and writers who are all working as volunteers. The unofficial high-definition audio patch is merely a port of the sound files from the PS4 version of Skyrim, which has four times the quality of the PC port. Dragons leave skid marks and footprints after an encounter with them. You can use Vampiric Drain to break barricades. Ever wanted to get away with murder? In Skyrim, of course. Well, if you use Frenzy Poison on some, a cinematic kill won't be considered a hostile action. Throughout your travels, you may come across a bandit impersonating a merchant called Telrav. Their name spelled backwards is Varlet, which is an old way of calling someone dishonest. The overturned longship that acts as the roof of Dravaska is the same ship the Ysgrimor used to sail from Admora to Skyrim. Dravaska itself was inspired by the Viking tradition of building town halls and longhouses out of ships. This was done so that if Ragnarok ever came, they would have a ship large enough for the town. The Visage of Mazund is a dwarven helmet that lets you shoot steam out of your mouth like a centurion. The steel plate helmet has Daedric text written across its brow. It translates to Nord Plate, written over and over again. Additionally, the dragon plate armor has the word Jonah Loeb written out in dragon language. Jonah Loeb is a character artist at Bethesda. Aside from sneaking his name into the game, Jonah Loeb also snuck his own dad. That's because the faces of the giants are modeled off Jonah's father. The dragons of Skyrim are technically not dragons, but wyverns. The key difference is that dragons typically have four legs, while wyverns only have two. Ebony ingots are made out of the crystallized blood of Lorcan. 
you can find a wrecked Dwemer ship in Solstheim. This was likely a nod to another Dwemer ship being found in Morrowind's Blood Moon expansion. You can take torches off walls to help you with sneaking. If you're being attacked by guards after committing a crime, you can yield by sheathing your weapon. Instead of going through the menus, you can just type in the console command TM to instantly remove the heads-up display for screenshots. Skyrim is the first game in the Elder Scrolls series to take place outside of the region of Uriel Septim 7. The difference in time between Arena and Oblivion is only 34 years. However, the difference between Oblivion and Skyrim is 201 years. Playing as a stealthy Argonian will make people refer to you as a Shadow Scale. These were Argonians who were born under the sign of the Shadow and offered to the Dark Brotherhood. There were so many Shadow Scales that they eventually found a subgroup within the Brotherhood. Many of the voice actors previously played famous roles. Jim Cummings, who voices Festus Crex and Vignar Greymane, is also the voice of Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. But the most fitting voice has to go to that of Mercer Frey. The leader of the Thieves' Guild is voiced by Stephen Russell, who previously voiced Garrett, the protagonist of the Thief games. If you return the Horn of Jurgen Windcaller back to the tomb you were supposed to find it in, you earn a free Dragon Soul. When the Empire wins the battle for Whiterun, they throw Heimskir, the crazed Talos preacher, into Dragon's Reach dungeon. Just another reason to side with the Empire, I suppose. Subscribe to fall damage, you milk drinker.